Hello everyone. This is Dhan Lakshmi, Assistant Professor of the Department from RMD Engineering College. In this session, I would like to discuss about voltage control of inverters, where in uh, the subject power electronics, our unit two is all about inverters. So when we talk about inverters, uh, we might be knowing about the inverter configuration, single phase inverters and three phase inverters. In single phase inverters, we have single phase half grid and single phase full grid. And then in three phase bridges, uh, three phase bridge inverters, we might be learning about 180 degree conduction mode and 120 degree conduction mode. Now, this is something uh, where how to control the output voltage of an inverter. So voltage control of single phase inverter. Voltage control in single phase inverter. So when we talk about voltage control of single phase inverter, then we have two ways. One is the external control. The other one is the internal control. So the external control is something where um, the con controlling part is not done in the inverter, where after getting the output from the inverter, that is given to the additional component, that is additional circuitry in order to control the output voltage. Whereas the internal control of inverter is something where the control is done in the inverter itself. So that is the internal control of uh, inverter. So when we talk about internal control of inverter, we have a very predominant technique for what we use is uh, PW, pulse width modulation technique. So in this pulse width modulation technique, as the name itself tells us that pulse width modulation. So it is modulation of width of the pulse, gating pulse given to the switches. Just by modulating the width of the pulse given to the switches, we can modulate, we can vary the output voltage because um, the pulse width in turn is nothing but the on time of a switch. So as we know that how long we give the pulse, that that, that much time of uh, that much time the signal the switch will be in on. Right. So the on period is nothing but the pulse width here. So as you as you are varying the width of the pulse. In turn, you are varying the output voltage. That is, in turn, you are varying the on time of the switch. In turn, the output voltage will be varied. So that is pulse width modulation. Modulating width of the pulse in turn uh, will vary the on time of the switch. In turn, it will vary the output voltage. And when we go for PWM technique, uh, this technique is used to reduce the overall harmonic distortion, DHT. It will also reduce the overall harmonic distortion. So that is an advantage of the PWM technique. So then uh, we will go to the types of uh, PWM technique. What are the types we have here? So what are the types of PWM technique? Uh, there are many types of, there are many techniques available under the PWM control. Now uh, let me discuss about single pulse width modulation, multiple pulse width modulation. And we have methods like sinusoidal pulse width modulation and modified sinusoidal pulse width modulation. In single pulse width modulation, as the name itself tells us that only one pulse or single pulse will be generated per half cycle. And in multiple pulse width modulation, per half cycle, multiple pulses are generated. Whereas in sinusoidal pulse width modulation, where instead of a reference, instead of a rectangle reference signal, here the sine wave will be taken as a reference signal. And modification is done in the sinusoidal pulse width modulation that is given as modified sinusoidal pulse width modulation. That is where we will be giving the carrier signal only for the first and last 60 degree. That is the modified sensorial pulse width modulation. So now we will discuss about the single pulse width modulation. Before proceeding with single pulse width modulation, so there we will see the advantages of PWM. As it is already told, the, it is an internal control of inverter, which means that no additional component is necessary, it is required. Right? So the control is done within the inverter itself, so no additional component is required. And moreover, uh, the higher order, we know that higher order harmonics can be easily filtered out. But only the lower order harmonics is a problem for us and where the lower order harmonics can be easily eliminated or minimized here. So that is another advantage of the PWM control. Single pulse width modulation as the name itself tells us that it is going to produce only one pulse per half cycle. So here we can see that only one pulse is generated per half cycle. For 180 degree, only one pulse is generated and for the next half cycle, one more another pulse will be generated. So here, uh, uh, the, uh, here first we should know how the pulse is generated here. So what we have, what we're going to do here is uh, we will be having a comparator. We will be having a comparator and this comparator is going to compare two signals. One is the carrier signal, the other one is the reference signal. Right? So the reference signal here is the rectangular. This rectangular signal is our reference signal and where the amplitude of the reference signal is clear. And the triangular, this triangular, uh, this triangular waveform is our carrier signal, and the amplitude of this carrier signal is A. Usually, this carrier signal will be a triangular one or a sawtooth one. So these two signals, that is rectangular reference signal and the triangular carrier signal, both are given to the comparator. And the comparator will be comparing these two signals, and the output of the comparator will be either a low state zero or a high state one. Right? So it will give either logic one or logic zero. So zero represents low state, and one represents the high state. And the condition here is whenever the amplitude of the reference signal, whenever the amplitude of the reference signal is greater than 
And now the amplitude of the reference signal is greater than the amplitude of the carrier signal. The comparator will give a logic of pulse. That is, uh, will give a I state, right? So which will produce the pulse. And whenever the case is reversed, that is, when the amplitude of the carrier signal is greater than the reference signal, then it will give a logic of zero. So, for example, we can take care for the period zero to alpha one. So here we can check that during this period we can we can notice that the amplitude the amplitude of the reference signal is less than the amplitude of the carrier signal. So here we can see that amplitude of reference signal is less than the amplitude of the carrier signal. So therefore, the logic is zero. And whereas during this period, so when we take this period, we can see that during this period. The amplitude of the reference signal. So here you can see that the amplitude of the reference signal is greater than the amplitude of the carrier signal. That's why the logic will be one. That is high state. That's why it's producing a pulse wave. Right. And again, during this period, again the same thing happens here, where the amplitude of the reference signal is less when compared to the amplitude of the carrier signal. So therefore, it is logic zero. It is low state. And again, during this period, the amplitude of the reference signal is greater when compared to the amplitude of the carrier signal. So therefore, logic one again. So this is how it is producing the gating signal, gate pulse. And where this gate pulse G1 will be given to switches 1 and 2, and G4 gate signal will be given to switches 3 and 4. Because we know that in a single phase uh, inverter, where we have two leg and four switches, for switches 1, 1 and 2 will be conducting in pair in one half cycle, and in another half cycle, switches 3 and 4 will be conducting. So finally, we can get the output voltage waveform in this pattern. Right. And here, how do we modulate the pulse width? That is a, a thing. So in order to modulate the pulse width, we have to vary the amplitude of the reference signal. Because the carrier signal, where in the carrier signal, the amplitude and frequency will be constant. We are not going to do anything with the carrier signal. Amplitude and frequency of the carrier signal will be constant. Only the amplitude of the reference signal, if you vary, in turn, you can vary the pulse width. That is, in order to get, uh, in order to increase the pulse width, I have to increase the uh, amplitude of the reference signal. Right. And in order to decrease the pulse width, if I want to decrease the pulse width, then I have to decrease the amplitude of the reference signal. So by increasing or decreasing the amplitude of the reference signal, I can vary the pulse width. So this is the idea of single pulse uh, heat up technique, where in this uh, only single pulse, single pulse is generated. That is in single year, only the single pulse is generated per half cycle. Whereas in the next technique, where you can see that the multiple pulses are given to generate multiple pulses per half cycle. So that is multiple PWM. Why? Because in single PWM, in single PWM technique, we have large high harmonic content. Right? So this high harmonic content can be reduced with the help of a multiple when we go for a multiple pulse, multiple PWM, where we can reduce the I, where we can uh, reduce the high harmonic content with the help of a multiple PWM. So in multiple PWM, what we're going to do, we're going to um, have multiple pulses per half cycle. Instead of having one pulse per cycle, per half cycle, here we're going to generate uh, multiple pulses per half cycle. So we can see this. So in multiple PWM, in multiple PWM signal, you can see that again the logic is same. So here we can see that multiple pulses are generated per half cycle. Whereas in case of a single PWM, we have only one pulse per half cycle. Here, number of pulses generated are multiple in number. So again, the logic is same where we have a comparator, a triangular wave, a carrier wave, and a reference square wave are compared and the pulses are generated. So here we can see that the instead of single pulse, we have four pulses generated per half cycle. So we will see how the number of pulses are independent. Again, the logic is same. So whenever the reference, whenever the amplitude of the reference signal is greater than the carrier signal, the pulse, the logic will be high and pulses will be generated. And here, the number of pulses will be depending upon the frequency of the carrier wave. So based on the frequency of the carrier wave, the you know, number of pulses will be generated. So if you have more, if you increase the frequency of the carrier wave, then you can have more number of pulses. If you decrease the frequency of the carrier wave, you can have less number of pulses. So based on the uh, frequency of the carrier wave determines the number of pulses. So that is the idea. So this, this is the frequency. You can see that once again. So you can see that the frequency, the frequency of the carrier wave defines the or determines the number of pulses here. So as you increase the number of, as you increase the frequency, then the number of pulses will be more. If you decrease the frequency, then the number of pulses will be less. So uh, the main draw drawback of this uh, single PWM is the high harmonic content. That's why we are going for the multiple PWM. So in multiple PWM, as we said, the, as we have discussed already, we have several pulses are produced in each half cycle. For each uh, half cycle, we will be producing multiple pulses. So that is the idea. And here you can see that the carrier frequency decides the number of pulses and the frequency of the reference signal decides the frequency of the reference signal decides the output frequency. 
So that is the idea here. So you can have so the number of pulses that are given by the formula Fc by 2f, where Fc is the carrier frequency and F is the frequency of the reference signal. So where Fc by F is nothing but the modulation, frequency modulation. Yeah. So therefore, you can define number of pulses n is equals to nmf divided by 2, where mf is nothing but frequency modulation index mf divided by 2, where mf is nothing but fc by f. Right? So you can see that mf is the frequency modulation index, and where this frequency modulation index is a frequency, carrier frequency divided by the output, carrier frequency divided by the frequency of the reference. Index. So therefore, you can see that n number of pulses will be mf divided by 2. Thus, we can get number of pulses uh, can be decided based on the based on the carrier the frequency of the carrier waveform and not by the frequency of the reference. Frequency of the reference waveform decides the output frequency. Frequency of the carrier waveform decides the number of pulses. So this is sinusoidal pulse width modulation where you can see that the reference signal instead of a square wave we have a sinusoidal wave. Just by comparing the sinusoidal wave with the same carrier wave, we can produce the number of pulses here. Whereas the, the difference between the previous one is where the multiple in, in multiple PWM technique, all the pulses are of equal in equal width, right? All the pulses were, are, were of all are of, are of all equal width, but here the pulses, the pulse widths are different, right? The pulses are of, are of not at equal width, they are different because of the characteristics of a sine wave. So due to the characteristic of a sine wave, you can see that the uh, pulses near the near the peak were of uh, same magnitude, same width. Whereas the pulses near this end, that is the starting and the ending point, you can see the pulses are very thin. Right? That is because of the characteristics of a sine wave. And in the modified sine wave, in the modified sinusoidal PWM, as uh, we already discussed in the in the middle of the sine wave, the pulses are not going to differ much because it is going to have the same width. Only the pulses at the beginning and the end will be differing a lot. So therefore, the, the carrier signal is here given only for the first 60 degree and the last 60 degree. So, because uh, at the middle, the peak, uh, the pulse width of the uh, pulse width are not going to vary much. So, that is not even if you vary the amplitude of the pin signal, the uh, amplitude pulse width of the pulses at the middle are not going to vary much. So, therefore, the carrier signal is applied only at the first 60 degree and the last 60 degree. This is called modified sinusoidal PWM. So, modified sinusoidal PWM, as we discussed, so only the first 60 degree and last 60 degree, the carrier frequencies are, carrier, uh, frequencies are given. So the main advantage of this technique is increased fundamental component, improved harmonic characteristics, reduced number of switching power devices, and decreased switching losses.